All right, everyone, this is going to be the next to last part, the part four of the building of the Zentor CNC kit. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to wire the connections up. This is assuming you're using the Tiny G controller because that's what I have. Um, otherwise, it's going to be a really simple video, really quick, not much to screw up as I have in the actual mechanical building. So let's get to it. All right, so obviously we have the actual controller. We have all the stepper wires in order. We also have a bunch of other stuff, power cables, a mean well power supply, and an SSR for spindle control. Now, as you see, I've already done all the actual wire stripping, connector placing, and whatnot. So that's not really going to be much of an issue. It's This video is mainly just setting everything up. So, let's start with the extra boring, which is the wiring of the main power supply. Move that out of the way. Now, you'll notice that I have a 1520R outlet here. What that's for is, basically, I have a Dremel that I don't feel like completely hacking apart to use with the CNC mill. I want to be able to, to keep it an be able to unmount it for other projects. So what I've decided to do is put an SSR on the actual spindle control and simply modulate that with the with the spindle line on the controller. So that way I turn on and turn off an outlet and the and the actual Dremel spindle will turn on or off. You'll notice that on the power supply there's a line for line and neutral and then ground. Line is black, it's the same as hot in that context. Um, again, there's not a whole lot to worry about wiring here. You just simply have to set things up. And I just realized I'm probably going to need to strip more wire. So I'll, I'll leave that part out. I'll tell you how to wire the SSR, but I'll leave the actual wiring out of the video because, well, watching me hunt for more spade connectors and stripping wiring will be even more boring than this. So to screw these down, what you have to remember about an SSR is you bridge the connection through. So essentially what we'll do is we'll switch the, the neutral line, the cold line of the AC input through the SSR and to the other side of the outlet. So that'll go there and then the bridge will be completed. Ground. Why did I just tighten that? Insert the ground as well. Tighten it down. And now our AC input portion is actually is complete that's all that you have to do now we get in the actual wiring of the not that wire the wiring of the controller now you can tell that this that the same power supply template is used for many different voltage and, and current capability power supplies because well it just says generically V minus and V plus. I mean, personally, I would rather see a ground symbol because I associate ground with 
the actual ground symbol much more than B minus. That's mainly a byproduct of doing a lot of op amp work where you actually do have a negative supply such as 12, 12 and negative 12 volts supply to generate a differential swing. But, but we have to make do with what the manufacturer wants to give us, so. you also notice that there are two pairs of outputs. That is, there's two voltage outputs and two ground outputs. This isn't necessarily needed. You can output the full four and a half amps of this power supply through a single terminal. This is just if you have multiple systems that need to share the same voltage. <clears throat> I mean, ideally to be ultra safe, we could bridge those those two those two outputs and wire them in, but I see no real need to do that. Now obviously this isn't very hard. Take wire, insert it into the terminal block. Did I unscrew that enough? And tighten it down. Now, one question that I had <clears throat> about the about the Tiny G controller when I first got it, just to you know answer a few questions, is the idea of the motor power supply. Because if you read the stepper data sheets, you'll see that they all run at relatively low voltages, 1.8 volts. Um, they're very low impedance devices. Running them at a higher voltage won't blow the motor, especially because stepper motors are running pulses. So they only go one phase at a time as they turn. Because of this, they will handle over voltage, provided it's, it's within reason. Obviously, if you decide to wire, you know, you wire. 120 mains to a rectifier bridge you're just gonna blow a motor but running a 4 or 2 volt motor at 24 a stepper motor will actually in some cases help the motor survive <clears throat> it'll also keep things like your power supplies your bridges everything else running a lot cooler <clears throat> because you're not pushing as much current through well, I mean, yeah, we'll stick with that. So now for the spindle relay, take the spindle, go black to ground, and we're not going to wire anything onto the 3.3 3 volt line that's actually provided because that's a static voltage, that is, that's... 3.3 .3 volts provided for whatever you need it to be. Um, what you want to wire the, the red, the positive line to the, the hot line is the spindle control, which is terminal number three. And now for the actual motor connection, which is oddly the hardest part about this process. Because of the fact that what we have is we have a six pin connector. We have four bindings for the motor. You know, obviously the forward and reverse sides of the A and B coils. And the manufacturer of a stepper motor did not make these signals in any way correlate to in any way correlate to the actual pinout. So 
I mean, a six wire stepper motor is a motor that can be driven unipolar or bipolar. That is, it also has common lines. But the issue is that the manufacturer didn't line these up, so it's not 1A, 2A common, 3A inverted. Instead, it's all over the place. And you can see where I wrote down the pinouts here just to prevent myself from getting lost. Complicating the issue further is the fact that the cables provided by Zen Tool Works, I mean, a little tiny odd wrapper or criticism, if, you, if you'll call it that, is that the cables are not long enough to go to any controller. I mean, wherever you put this controller, one cable is going to be too short. Granted that this, the x-axis and the y-axis are static, but the z-axis is not. The z-axis will move back and forth. So, what I did was I got an old Ethernet cable that I chopped up a long time ago and basically Jimmy rigged its wires to the stepper motor. So I'll lead you through a process of wiring one, then I'll end the video and you guys can figure out from there, but so let's see what went where exciting sixes so the blue wire will be B What you want to do is you want to fold these over or cut them so that the, the actual length of wire you have is only about three or four millimeters long. This is because of the fact that if it's too long, what you risk is you risk accidentally bridging a connection if you move the controller too much. So, I mean, good wire management is always a good policy to have. So take that, and I'm just going simply by, obviously you see there aren't any predefined axes. There's motor one, motor two, motor three, motor four. I'm going X for motor one, Y for motor two, Z for motor three. Take the blue wire, which I wired to pin six, which is B up here. Put it into the B1 position and tighten it down. Then inverted B, which will be B2, is 3. That's the brown wire. Brown wire is attached to the green. Fold green over a little bit. And stick it in. And clamp it down. Isn't wiring fun? And now for the A connections, you only have to look at the first one to figure out what the other one is. So you didn't wire two wires to one wire. Let's see, A is four, that's the yellow wire. Yellow wire goes to brown. Brown is right here. Leave that in the block, tighten it down. And then obviously the orange wire 
goes into A2, which is inverted A, or A differential. There you go. And now wiring a one motor is complete. You wire the other remaining ones and your wiring job is done. A few words of caution. First of all, check the motor polarity and the supply polarity because obviously electronics don't like having their power supplies inverted and there's no protection circuitry <coughs> on, on the board to prevent that. Um, protection circuitry a bridge rectifier that's used for AC purposes will correct an inverted supply. It will establish a positive and negative, an absolute positive and negative, regardless of what polarity input signal is put in. But there's none of that on this board. So check, check the polarity on the power supply to make sure it's good before juicing the thing, otherwise you're just going to smoke all the components on the board. The other thing, check the motors. Motors are a bit less critical because motors are physical devices. They spin, they run, so, so they will have a good amount of over tolerance to adverse conditions. But for the motor's lifetime's sake, you will definitely want to check the check the polarity just to make sure otherwise I mean if you wire it incorrectly there's a few different routes that could happen the first thing is you could blow a motor if you accidentally wire a common line in because now you're only exciting half a winding and you're exciting it with a full amperage full amperage and full voltage the other thing that could happen is you could spin the motor in a direction you're not accounting for that in itself is a relatively easy fix though so the corrective action depends on well which way you screwed up all right well in the next video be 